So you've just finished the tutorial, you've been given the quest to go visit your local trader, and the game has just given you your first skill points. So let's quickly talk about what I believe is the best way to spend your first four skill points. So the first one I always take, regardless of what I'm planning on, is Sexual Tyrannosaurus. What it's going to do is reduce the stamina cost of using your tools and swinging with melee weapons. Next, I would recommend either Pummel Pete or Skull Crusher. Now, the reason I like these two is they're both really good melee weapons, but they're also in the Strength Tree. And as you need to level up your strength to further increase your Sexual Tyrannosaurus and take your, the Mining Perks and Master Chef and all of these great perks in the Strength Tree, I like to use one of these two melee weapons because it just synergizes with everything else you need to do. I'm partial to Pummel Pete personally, so let's go with that. For my other two points, I always like to come over to the Fortitude Tree and grab Rule 1 Cardio. This is going to increase stamina regen by 10% while sprinting. As you're going to be on foot for a while, you're going to get a lot of value out of this in the early game. And for the last point, I usually end up taking Healing Factor. This is just going to give you some passive health regen that's going to make your life a little bit easier. You won't have to worry about burning through all of your healing items when you do take damage. For tip number two, I want to talk about what POIs or points of interest you want to be looting on like day one, two, and three, or even your first week. And I like to focus at the very beginning on small little houses. Now, the most important thing, in my opinion, is finding a wrench. And the best place to find wrenches is in sinks, and all houses have a kitchen. No wrench here, but we have plenty more houses to loot and try and find one. In addition, kitchens will often give you food and water, like these raviolis we just found, and those empty jars that we can fill up with water. We got some coffee there. These are just the basic supplies you're going to need to survive in the early game. Now, there's nothing wrong, per se, with looting a business on day one, two, or three, but we should mention game stage. Now, if you come up to the Players tab in the menu, you can see your game stage right here. This number is going to increase as you level up, do quests, and just generally play the game. Now, the quality of loot that you find in Alpha 19, which is the current version of the game, is going to increase as your game stage goes up. So you don't really want to loot those high-profile POIs like, let's say, a Working Stiff Tools on day one because you're only going to find stone tools, which are extremely easy to craft. You want to wait a little while so you can find, like, iron or even steel tools there. Now it's at this point you're going to want to start heading towards the trader so you can complete the tutorial, start to buy and sell stuff, and just really find a place to set up shop. But let's say you had found a wrench in your first sink. A really good way to make money in the early game is by wrenching like kitchen appliances like this, or radiators like this, and you can see just from taking a few seconds to wrench these appliances apart we got over a hundred coin worth of items to sell to the trader. AC units are also real big, cars are real nice, uh, beds for the springs, basically anything sort of metallic or mechanical looking, wrench that bad boy and uh, make some coin that way. So as I'm just kind of traveling towards the trader on day one, there are certain things I like to look out for and pick up. Uh, first, because it's right here, I like to grab as much chrysanthemum as I can on day one. Whenever I find a field of it, I just like to pick up uh, pretty much everything that I see in the field, like 30 or 40 of it. And what you can do with this stuff, after you put one point into Master Chef in the Strength Tree, you'll unlock the red tea recipe, which allows you to mix this stuff with water and make red tea. And red tea is just a better version of water that's going to help stretch out your food a little bit. The second thing I'm always looking for is bird's nest. Now, you can get feathers as well as eggs from these. Eggs, obviously, you can eat. And the feathers can be used to make arrows, which you're going to need... Uh, not necessarily need, but you're going to want a lot of arrows to help defend yourself at range in the early game. I also like to break bird's nests after I loot them. That way I know which ones have been looted because they're not there anymore. And you can also get extra plant fiber and feathers by doing that, as well as some cloth. The third thing I'm looking for is stumps. Now these will give you wood, which you're going to need throughout your entire playthrough. But they also have a chance to give you honey, and we just got one there. Now honey can be used just to eat as food, but it will also cure in early stage infection if you get into a bad fight with a zombie. Another resource you're going to need a lot in the early game is stone. And rather than just going out and banging on the big rocks that you find in an open field, if you happen to come across these little piles of bricks, they actually give you quite a bit more stone, quite a bit easier than uh, any other way of harvesting stone. And these piles of uh, goop that you see on the road right here, these are always really nice. Uh, at any point in the game because they give you bones. They also give you animal fat, nitrate powder, and rotting flesh. You can throw all these out, maybe keep the animal fat if you want to make more torches or candles, 
Typically, I just throw those out and keep the bones because you can use the bones to make glue and then combine that with cloth to make duct tape, which you're going to need in the early game to make some really important recipes. In addition to that, any cars or piles of garbage you come across, you definitely want to loot. You can just find all sorts of random goodies in there, and if not, you can just sell that stuff to the trader. Now, it's also good to keep your eyes peeled for little animals that you could hunt, like this rabbit up here. And rather than using your bow and trying to crouch down and sneak and hit him with arrows, which, you know, granted, can be kind of fun, just run up and hit him with your club. Just make sure you have a full stamina bar, and it's really not that bad. Additionally, once you've gotten five bones, either from the piles of goop or from hunting animals, you can craft a bone knife, bring that down to your action bar, and you can use this to harvest animals more efficiently and get more meat, leather, animal fat, and all that goodness. So next, let's talk about safety poles and nerd poles. This is a safety pole. The idea is it's just two blocks underneath you that get you up off the ground where things can't reach you. Uh, the only thing that I know of that can definitely reach you up on a safety pole is a bear. So if you are hunting bears, you want to go with three blocks high instead of two. Now, once you're up here, you can just pull your enemy, be it that lumberjack or this cougar that you want to kill for the meat, and just kind of sit up here safely and shoot it with your bow. And oh no, the block's about to break? Well, I'll just repair it real quick. Now, I wouldn't recommend hunting bears or cougars on day one, but this option is available to you if you want to use it. This technique also works really well if you're trying to play on insane nightmare difficulty. Uh, just hopping up on a couple of frame blocks will get you out of the range of the zombies and allow you to slap them in the head. So that's the safety pull. Let's talk about nerd pulling next. The general idea here is if you want to get somewhere up high, just craft a bunch of frame blocks and you can just jump and place them underneath you, Minecraft style, until you get to the roof. And this is very, very useful if you happen to know that there's something useful on a roof. Like, look at all this main loot. Normally, we would have to go through this entire dungeon style POI, which, you know, granted is fun, but it takes a lot of time and effort. But knowing that the main loot is up here, as it often is on roofs, we can just come up here, deal with Mr. Doggo and Mr. Cowboy, and then all of these goodies are ours for the taking. All right, so it's day one. You've hoofed it all the way over here. You found some good stuff. You've been collecting all the little things that you need. Now let's go talk to our trader. Whenever you visit the trader, always remember to check the jobs and try and find something close, especially in the early game, like this fetch quest 261 meters away, super close, that's absolutely perfect. Now go ahead and check out the inventory and go ahead and sell all those little things that you've been collecting all day long and see how much coin you've got to work with. So now you've got 500 coin to play with. You wanna look through the trader's inventory every three days and they will restock every third day. So she's gonna reset on day four, day seven, day 10, etc. And it's difficult to narrow down the list of things that you wanna buy, but just to cover some of the basics in the very early game, you wanna look for cobblestone. You're gonna to want to have cobblestone to reinforce whatever your little horde base is up to cobblestone blocks because they have significantly more hit points than wood and the trader will often have a small amount of cobblestone you can buy for dirt cheap. You can also craft cobblestone and find it out in the open world fairly easily, but it is a really easy way to pick up some easy cobble in the early game. Another thing is low level weapons, like this level one double barrel shotgun right here, only 400, and we've already found some shotgun shells. So that's gonna be a lot better than our wooden bow or the blunderbusses, which are so prevalent in the early game. Healing items like these painkillers or these first aid kits, uh, we can't afford those on day one, but these are things that I would try and buy before the reset. And lastly, I like to look out for cheap and versatile mods, like this structural brace mod. You can put this on literally any melee weapon or tool, and it's going to double its durability. In addition, it's also going to increase the damage of any melee weapon or the block damage of any tool by just a little bit, but it's still really worth it to check out cheap and versatile mods. Now, there are a lot more things that we could talk about with the trader to keep your eyes peeled for, but that could be a video just in its own. So let's move on. So my last tip is setting up your horde base close to your local trader. And I happen to know of a perfect little location right next to Jen's place on Navisgain. If you just head to the south, right towards the burnt biome, you'll see the silhouette of a house in the distance. And next to that house is a little one car garage. 
Now one car garages are perfect for setting up little workshops slash horde bases because they're small, they have just enough room for all of your workbenches eventually, and you've already got a structure that's easy to reinforce and work with. Bust out this door, craft out a hatch and slap this bad boy down, and just like that you are looking pretty well reinforced. If any zombies come by they should try and come through this passage right here, and if they don't that just means the walls around here are weaker than your hatch right here. So what we can do is take some of the wood and cobblestone we've been collecting and start to upgrade the walls. And this layer right here, this second layer up, this is the layer that the zombies are primarily going to be attacking if they are going to attack the walls. So this is the layer you want to upgrade to cobblestone first. And cobblestone, as you can see, has 1500 hit points and this hatch only has 300. So this will look like the shortest path to them as soon as you get these walls upgraded. And at this point, you can easily defend yourself from any sort of zombie threat that comes your way. Come over here, Thick. I need you to be a guinea pig for me. Yeah, so you can just safely chill behind your hatch right here and take care of all the business you need to take care of. And believe it or not, this is really all you need for your first horde night on day seven. Uh, just one row of cobblestone walls around the edge and a little cobblestone in your bags to help repair the walls if they get damaged. And ideally, you want to take your hatch up to iron by that point. You can craft an iron hatch for only 40 iron and then reinforce it two more times for an additional 40 iron each time. And finding 120 iron by day seven is, a, you know, if you haven't found 120 iron by day seven, you're doing something wrong. And this thing actually has three health bars with 1,000 HP each. So it's got 3,000 HP. But the important thing is that because it has three different health bars, it looks like it has less HP to the zombies than these cobblestone walls. So they'll all come pile up right here you can just repair this with scrap iron and fight them off. Easy peasy with your melee weapon. Or if you want to get really fancy, go put a point into Demolitions Expert and unlock pipe bombs. And you can easily just take them out in mass just by standing over here and chucking pipe bombs at the entrance. Now we did talk about the skill points on day one, but let's talk a little bit more before we end this about what you want to spend your skill points on uh, after day one, but before day seven. So as we just said, one point into Demolitions Expert is really good. You can cheaply craft pipe bombs, which will make a huge impact on clearing out the horde very quickly. Throwing a couple points into Lucky Looter early on is just going to help you find better stuff and more of it throughout your entire playthrough. And of course, continuing to upgrade all of the strength perks that we've already invested into, like Sexual Tyrannosaurus, your preferred melee weapon, and these perks down here, Miner 69er and Motherload, are going to help you mine much, much, much more efficiently. And also just sort of do more block damage, you know, if you needed to break into a, a weapon safe or what have you. I always like to put one point into Pain Tolerance, one into Healing Factor, and one into Rule, one Cardio. Uh, eventually, I like to take these up higher, but for a while, I think just one point each is really good. But very, very important is you need to focus on Intellect at some point in the early game. Now you can take all those points that we just spent, but you have to find time to put points into intellect. And the reason for this is Advanced Engineering and Grease Monkey. Advanced Engineering Rank 2 is going to unlock all of the crafting benches that you're going to need to do the things that you need to do. So we got up to Tinkerer in Advanced Engineering. Now this would give us these recipes uh, for the chemistry station, the workbench, the cement mixer, and the forge. And you're going to need all of these things every playthrough just to do the basics of the game. And you can find them out in the open world, but it's really nice to have them at your home. And it's really worth the investment just putting those points into advanced engineering. Additionally, you're also going to want to get at least Grease Monkey level 2. Because having a vehicle is going to make traversing the world so much easier, faster, safer, and provide storage within the vehicle itself. Which is going to allow you to loot a lot more while you're out and bring it all home much quicker and easier. And I went ahead and crafted out a mini bike real quick just so we can have a look at what that looks like. Let's pop that guy on the ground, gas it up. And mini bike is definitely not the best vehicle out there, but it's one that you can get easily by day seven if you're trying. And you know, it speeds you up quite a bit and it doesn't require stamina while you're on it. Additionally, you can be completely encumbered and still move at the full movement speed of the mini bike. It's super gas efficient and it has a storage inventory, which gives you about a, I'd say 60% additional storage if you're out looting. 
And gosh, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it educational. If you did, please hit the like button and let me know down in the comments. And also, please check out the 7 Days to Die Let's Plays that I work on. New episodes every other day. They're all recorded in 2K, and I'm really proud of them. I think that they're pretty entertaining. So again, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Love your faces, and I'll see you next time. Bye.